is election day and Virginia is a state to watch. All 140 seats in the General Assembly are up for the taking and candidates are fighting for your support. It is ridiculously high number. It's a must win for both sides. Will the Democrats or Republicans come out on top? And your vote could determine the state's stance on key issues. I think we can come together around a 15-week bill. The implications of this election are far-reaching. What message might it send to the nation heading into the all-important elections in 2024? With Election Day just hours away, it's your voice, your vote. Election Day is one day away and all eyes are on the Commonwealth. Control of the Virginia General Assembly is at stake, but the implications go beyond our state borders. The political world calls this election a key test for both parties heading into 2024. We've brought in a political expert from Hampton Roads to break down the key races and potential outcomes. Joining us in studio today for this hour are Mike Gooding and political analyst Dr. Leslie Coggle from Virginia Wesleyan University. Thank you for joining us. First we're going to get started with this with the polls opening in just 15 hours. We want to turn to meteorologist Francis Payton for a look at that forecast on election day. Francis, you know, it's going to be a great day to head out to the polls a little bit on the breezy side, but I think temperatures we can all agree with are going to be quite pleasant out there. We're going to start off your morning with temperatures in the 50s. That seasonal chill will be in place looking at some cloud cover too, due to that warm front lifting over the region. We are going to see cloud cover decrease throughout the day, so expect to see mostly sunny skies by the later afternoon time frame. Temperatures are going to be warming up 10 degrees warmer than today. You're looking at high temperatures reaching into the middle. Some of us even nearing the upper 70s for tomorrow afternoon. You know, it's actually when we get close to record breaking temperatures. And you Keep in mind, last week we did see some record-breaking high temperatures, but as far as the record to beat was 79 degrees. Our current uh, forecast right now is 77, but you know we're going to be dealing with a roller coaster of temperatures throughout the week, so we have one more chance of likely breaking a record later this week. As of right now, it is a beautiful afternoon out there. We're talking mostly sunny skies, as you can see from our sky view camera from Virginia Beach Town Center. High pressure systems going to remain in control. That's going to be the main component of your weather pattern, which will keep us dry throughout the day tomorrow, but also most of this week. But we have some lower systems that are going to drive your temperatures. Here we have that warm front that's going to lift over the region. Winds moving in from the south for tomorrow. That's going to contribute to the warm up before we're looking at a cold front that's going to cool things off a little bit. So talking back to the 60s on Wednesday, talking again, those 70s returning for your Thursday, and that's going to be your next chance of rain. So if we're going to be focused on a Election day Tuesday. It's going to be breezy, sunny, but it's going to be a good day to head out to the polls. Back to you guys. Francis, thank you. Well, all 140 seats in the Virginia General Assembly are up for grabs tomorrow for the first time in two years. Yeah, the balance of power is at stake, which is why candidates have poured millions of dollars into these races. Right now, Republicans have the majority in the House while Democrats control the Senate. Your vote could determine which party comes out on top. So let's turn things over to Mike Gooding and Dr. Leslie Coggle to explain why this matters. Mike. Well, Bethany and Eugene, in politics and in governance in general, mathematics really make a difference. The numbers really do count. Uh, Leslie uh, from Virginia Wesleyan University, let's go through the numbers real quickly. In the House of Delegates, Republicans currently are in control, 52 to 48, so it's pretty close. And in the Senate, Democrats are in control, 22 to 18, and in bicameral legislation, one party can't really control much without one chamber controlling the other, and then we've got a Republican governor. Tell me, as close as this is, why this is so urgent tomorrow. So this matters a great deal because, quite frankly, what you see when you have divided government is neither party is able to get through their ideal legislative outcomes. So in Virginia, we've seen, quite frankly, over the course of the past two years, some legislation or some some kind of various initiatives that have either stalled as a result of Democrats kind of vetoing or potentially vetoing at the Senate level or kind of many Republican policies not getting through uh, the process of negotiation because Democrats are in control at the Senate level. So this has led to, I think, a lot more compromises than we would otherwise see and quite frankly, a lot more moderate legislation or kind of moderate outcomes if either party 
uh, loses control of one of the chambers tomorrow, we're going to see very different negotiations going forward and likely different policies. When Louise Lucas in Portsmouth was running for her uh, primary back in the summer, she talked about being the leader of the Great Blue Wall yeah. in the Senate. T talk about that a little. What, what does that matter? Yeah, so that mattered a great deal because things like corporate tax cuts that Governor Youngkin supported uh, and most Republicans support just did not get through. They weren't getting through uh, because they didn't have Democrat support or Democratic support in the Senate. The same is going to be true of abortion restrictions and the like. Uh, those didn't even come up in any real and meaningful way in the last legislative session because they were never going to get past a Democratic Senate. right? So just the presence of Democrats, that big blue wall, has really um, kind of kept the governor from getting a lot of the legislation he would like and Republicans from getting a lot of legislation they would like even though they control the governorship and one of the chambers. And just as a matter of civics 101, if your party is in control of the chamber, say like the House of Delegates, then you get to pick who the speaker is, mm -hmm. in this case Todd Gilbert, Republican yeah. from Shenandoah County. What difference does that make as far as government? So who picks the speaker is actually incredibly important because the speaker sets the agenda and lays down a lot of the rules for how government is going to function at that level, right? So what legislation is going to be heard, how things go to committee. Um, so again, who controls the House of Delegates is really going to set the agenda for what types of legislation is going to go through that chamber. Um, and who controls the Senate is really going to kind of matter whether or not the governor actually sees those bills on his desk. And then something as arcane as the makeup of committee committees, right? Yeah. Uh, if your party is in control, say in the mm -hmm. Senate, you get to pick the personalities who sit on key committees like education and health, which education has been a big thing for Governor Youngkin. Yeah. And so in some ways they're able to thwart his will, right? Yes, absolutely. So again, party leaders, when they get control of these chambers, can do a lot to kind of alter the function of government and alter legislation, how it's going to be heard, um, whether or not it's going to be heard, and kind of just the nature of the parties who are going to be hearing. And I'm trying to remember, I've been around here for a couple of years observing this stuff, and I don't know that we've ever had a situation in a midterm where the numbers were this close and this split. In your mind, do you, do you recall anything in Virginia even close to like this? I do not, certainly not since I've been here. And I think we see both parties control a chamber, but just on the razor's edge, right? So a couple key races are deciding the control of each of these chambers on election night. And, and not that we're going to pro prognosticate in any kind of way, but uh, it's pretty darn close, would yeah. you say? Yeah, certainly, and all the polling that we have done shows that everything is within the margin of error. So it looks like a Democratic-Republican toss-up in terms of who controls either chamber. Okay, Leslie, we'll be back and check in with you in just a little bit. Uh, Eugene and Bethany? All right, Mike, thank you. Now, ultimately, it's up to Virginians to make their voices heard tomorrow. Polls open at 6 in the morning. Voters have until 7 tomorrow night to get in line to cast their ballots. Your polling place is based on the address that you used to register to vote. But if you forgot to register by the traditional deadline, you can still vote tomorrow using a provisional ballot. Before you head to the polls, make sure you grab your ID or another form of identification like your passport. And if you run into problems at the polls tomorrow, report it to the State Department of Elections. Voters can submit an online complaint to notify the agency about an incident. We have the link posted on 13newsnow.com under links in the news. And if you need a ride to the polls, Hampton Roads Transit is making it easier for everyone to get out and vote tomorrow. The agency is offering free rides all day. That means you can take a bus, you can take light rail or ferry without worrying about paying for it. 13 News Now is here to help you make sure that you're all set to vote tomorrow. You can get our voter's guide right now by texting the word vote to 757-628-6200. The guide explains how to confirm your polling place and breaks down the acceptable forms of ID. Well, candidates are fighting to win your vote. One key race is between Monty Mason and Danny Diggs. What you need to know about the battle for Senate District 24. And candidates are taking off the gloves. Why a speech made years ago is now at the center of a political fight. This isn't something we just talk about. It's a calling. When it was my turn, I didn't hesitate. Deploying for Operation Enduring Freedom, serving our country for 20 years, protecting freedom abroad. I'm Michael Fagans, and I'm running for delegate because what I want to to protect is on the line here at home. We need leaders to defend women's reproductive rights and put an end to gun violence. 
because protecting freedom isn't talk. It's a calling. Monty Mason's been lying about Danny Diggs the whole campaign. Truth Tracker finds that claim false. Mason is desperate to hide his racist past. In college, Monty Mason and his frat buddies mocked the brutality of slavery and sponsored a slave auction. This wasn't a youthful indiscretion. In Richmond, Mason voted against tougher penalties on cross burning. Monty Mason isn't fit to hold public office. I'm Danny Diggs, candidate for Senate, and I sponsored this ad. I'm Emily Brewer. I grew up here and I'm raising my family here, but we all know so many who have left looking for more opportunities. I'm running for Senate because we must do better. I'll fight for skilled trades and workforce training so the next generation can build their lives here. I'll stand up for our farmers who are being crushed by regulation, and I'll cut taxes to make sure you can make ends meet. As your next seat, Senator, this is my commitment to you. Together, let's work to make our community the best place to live, build a career, and raise our families. Banning abortion won't lower anyone's costs, and rolling back gun laws won't raise wages. But Virginia Republicans are pushing a culture war agenda. More division, less freedom. No plans to fix our biggest problems. Virginia Democrats have common sense plans to lower drug costs, increase wages, and keep guns out of our schools. So when you vote, remember, one party is fighting a culture war. The other is fighting for you. Vote for Democrats. FF PAC paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Out here, hard work mows you. It's what took me to Virginia Tech and the NFL. Who else? Aaron Rose. Then I brought the lessons from the field back home because Virginia Beach is worth fighting for. I started a nonprofit for kids who grew up like me. Now, the work is in Richmond fighting for their future and what matters most. Investing in our schools, tax relief for families, and protecting reproductive freedom. I'm Aaron Rouse. Let's get to work. We need leaders who can bring us together. That is not Nadarius Clark. Instead of bringing people together, Nadarius Clark is tearing people apart, saying, we have been oppressed by this racist society for too long. Clark even said, Our counterparts, a Caucasian, can be mediocre and still get a $100,000 job. Career politician Nadarius Clark using race to tear us apart for his personal political gain. I'm Mike Dillinger, candidate for state delegate, and I sponsored this ad. She claims when she left her apartment, she locked the door. When she got back, the door was unlocked. She thought she saw an intruder with a weapon. She fired him. Is she gonna be okay? The big question is, what was Charlotte doing in that apartment? General Hospital on ABC. The balance of power in the Commonwealth will likely be determined by a handful of competitive districts. One of the most closely watched races in all of Virginia right now is here in Hampton Roads. The battle between State Senator Monty Mason and Sheriff Danny Diggs. It has generated more than $5 million in total fundraising. Alex Littlehale shows us why the stakes are so high for Senate District 24. It is ridiculously high number. It's a must win for both sides. This is Virginia's 24th Senate district, covering close to 160,000 people across Williamsburg, Pocosin, and a portion of Newport News. It's now under a spotlight in Virginia's 2023 elections. More than 60% of the voters here in this battleground district come from the old first district held by Democratic incumbent state senator Monty Mason. He's running to maintain Democrats' two-seat majority in the state Senate. Over the years, gravitated towards behavioral health. I serve on the Behavioral Health Commission. Mason prides himself on working across the aisle with Republicans. Of the 17 bills he passed last year, 10 were patroned or co-patroned by a Republican. One example is we had an advanced manufacturing grant fund. I carried it with a Republican from Southwest Virginia, working together showing the importance of rural for and high manufacturing in urban areas. Challenging him is Danny Diggs, the York Pocosin Sheriff for more than 20 years. As a former law enforcement officer, he names public safety his biggest priority, followed by his support of Governor Glenn Youngkin's Parents Matter education stance. School administrators need to get a handle on discipline in schools. Teachers report problems and nothing happens. They get swept under the rug. On this election cycle's most watched topic, State Senator Mason believes in keeping Virginia's current abortion laws. While Diggs says he'd support legislation on a 15-week ban. I'm Alex little for 13 News Now. Well, a speech made three years ago is now at the center of this political fight. 
So what you just heard was audio from the pro-gun rights protest at the state capitol in Richmond that caught national attention in 2020. More specifically, it's audio of a speech given by former Yoke Pocosin Sheriff Danny Diggs. An ad by Mason's team attacks Diggs' appearance at this protest, calling into question the other protesters Diggs appeared alongside. This is Mason's response to reporter Alex Littlehales. The bulk of the ad is directed towards my opponent participating in the March on Richmond in January of 2020. As a current law enforcement professional, when we had intelligence that said all kinds of very, very dangerous groups were participating in that march, and my opponent chose to be a part of that in uniform and a featured speaker. So we asked Diggs about this and he pushed back on Mason's claim saying he was there only to quote, support the Second Amendment. And I went there to uh, show my support for the Constitution and the Second Amendment. That was my purpose, okay, and that's what I did. I was, mine was to say I was, uh, I, that that's extreme. For me to support the Constitution is extreme. Uh, that's crazy. Where there, there were 20,000 people there. He claims that uh, there were all these hate groups and uh, all. I don't know that they were there. I didn't meet with them. I didn't talk to them. I talked to the. This is just one example of a contested political ad. So let's bring back in our Mike Gooding and Dr. Leslie Coggle. Candidates right now, Mike, are really taking off the gloves to try and win the votes. Well, that, that is true, Bethany and Eugene. We've all seen these commercials. We've suffered through them these last couple of months. And uh, speaking quite frankly, they're pretty hideous, to be honest with you. Um, uh, in, in the Danny Diggs uh, race there with Monty Mason, uh, and Monty's commercial calls Danny a white nationalist. Uh, but that's, that's just one of many. We've had candidates call each other radicals, they've called each other criminals, they've called each other MAGA, MAGA extremists. Uh, Leslie, as one who has dedicated your professional career to uh, good governance and, 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 and uh, politics, what, what's the impact on citizens when they're just assaulted with these for just for weeks at a time? So we've got some very good data that suggests these ads make citizens much more cynical about politics and politicians. They really undermine confidence in government and assessments of political leaders. But despite that, these candidates keep cranking them out. And I bet I know the reason is why is because they've got consultants that tell them that they work. Yes, and there's research that suggests the consultants are right because people are more likely to remember negative information than positive information when they go to the polls. So those positive campaign ads, most people tune out. Negative campaign ads, people are more likely to watch and people are more likely to remember. But if we were in charge, right, we would tell our candidate to just only talk about themselves and don't talk about the other guy. But I guess that's just naive. No, this is just in particularly not going to happen in races where as much money has come in as in this particular Senate race. So a lot of this outside spending um, has meant that outside groups get a little bit of say in, in kind of what these ads look like, oftentimes because they're paying to air them. But Leslie, have even you been surprised at the negativity? I mean, the, it seems like we've hit a new low here this year. This one is particularly ugly, and the negativity is surprising. But I think the negativity is really an artifact of how competitive these races are. You can tell the candidates have an understanding that this one is going to be close because they're kind of airing these negative campaigns. They're or at campaign ads. It's almost like a Hail Mary pass. But the thing I wonder is, Aren't you kind of preaching to the choir? In other words, if, if, if you're one candidate that's, that's slinging mud at the other, you're not really winning any new votes, are you? Because your base is already going to vote the way they're going to vote anyway. No, but certainly in races like this, I think part of what we're seeing is tomorrow is going to be a turnout game. It's making sure that your base thinks enough is on the line to turn out to vote. And I think this is another thing that those negative campaign ads do is they often invoke fear. In, in kind of the other side, right? So part of the idea here is that you're gonna make sure that your constituents or your, your group goes to the polls on election day because they really fear what the other candidate who you're opposing 
um, you know, has to offer. And so, Leslie, would you say rightly or wrongly we, we might be stuck with this type of uh, commercials on our airwaves going forward? Negative campaigns are forever. As long as we have competitive races, I imagine you're going to see these. Although outside groups have certainly done a lot to, to kind of advance legislation and the like uh, to ensure that these ads have accurate information. So negative campaign ads can be problematic overall because they breed cynicism, but when they're accurate information, you can argue they're fair game. The real negative campaign ads that bother me are the negative campaign ads that also include inaccurate information. All right, well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Stay put. We'll be back with you in just a little bit for now. Back to Bethany and Eugene. All right, Mike, thanks. When we come back, two familiar faces are vying for a newly redrawn seat that covers a lot of land. Next, we take a closer look at the race for Senate District 17. I'm Phil Hernandez. As a civil rights attorney and nonprofit leader, I've spent my entire career fighting for our rights. But in this election, Andy Pittman wants to be the deciding vote to take away reproductive rights and ban abortion in Virginia. We can't let that happen. We have to get out and vote. I'm Phil Hernandez, candidate for delegate, and I sponsored this ad to keep women in charge of their own reproductive health care. This is Buford. His mom is Karen Greenhall, and she's our hardworking delegate. Karen is as caring and considerate as Buford is cute. Karen's a grandma who loves Virginia, and she fights hard for working families, safer neighborhoods, lower taxes, better paying jobs. That's why Karen Greenhall serves. So when you see all those nasty negative ads, remember, Buford wants you to vote for his mom. Karen Greenhall, she's one of the good ones. I'm Danny Diggs. For four decades, I served in law enforcement. From a dispatcher, to an investigator, to sheriff. My commitment has always been the same. Keep our neighborhoods safe and help families lead better lives. Now I'm taking that mission to the state senate. I'll fully fund our police, put criminals behind bars, and I'll fight for better schools and always put parents first. I'm Danny Diggs, and I'm ready to take some common sense to Richmond. We need leaders who can bring us together. That is not Nadarius Clark. Instead of bringing people together, Nadarius Clark is tearing people apart, saying, we have been oppressed by this racist society for too long. Clark even said, Our counterparts, a Caucasian, can be mediocre and still get a $100,000 job. Career politician Nadarius Clark using race to tear us apart for his personal political game. I'm Mike Dillinger, candidate for state delegate, and I sponsored this ad. Everyone's voicing their views on America's number one daytime talk show. And this week, watch out, because Leslie Jones, Tyler Perry, Hillary Clinton, and John Legend are all hitting the table on ABC's The View. Welcome back. Well, new political maps have reshaped House and Senate districts in Virginia. Now, two sitting delegates are vying for one newly redrawn seat. Delegates Clinton Jenkins and Emily Brewer are hoping to win Senate District 17. That new seat includes a lot of land, all of Suffolk, Isle of Wight, and Southampton counties, as well as parts of Chesapeake and Portsmouth. Sarah Hammond introduces us to the candidates. I was raised in the heart of Suffolk. I, I love where I'm from, and I have put my passion to that each and every day I serve there. Brewer, a Republican, currently represents the 64th district in the House of Delegates. She says since serving, she's proud to have brought broadband to her area and working to overhaul foster care in the state. And we are 49th to 15 in the country for policies, and so each year we've been chipping away at that. Jenkins, a Democrat, represents the 76th district in the House of Delegates. He calls expanding dental care for Medicaid customers between 19 
19 and 65 years old a big achievement. To me, that's my crowning uh, glory right there to make sure people have dental care, uh, health care, period. Looking towards the future, if elected, Jenkins says he wants to alleviate mental health challenges here in Virginia and fully fund public schools. In addition to increasing uh, teachers' pay to the national average. We, we have um, challenges with infrastructure, school buildings. Brewer says she'll look towards increasing workforce development like internships and putting more money into skilled trades. Starting a list of things that will help keep the next generation here if they want to is really what uh, drives me. When it comes to abortion, Brewer says she supports Governor Glenn Youngkin's stance, while Jenkins says it's none of their business. I stood in support of the governor's, I think, common sense uh, 15 week limitation with exceptions. It does not make sense for a politician to come between a person and their doctor. Gun violence is an issue that is plaguing not just Hampton Roads, but the entire state and country. Jenkins says the state needs to provide more resources. So that they can provide programs and outlets in school or out of school. Brewer says something the state already has in place to help with behavioral health is a great step. The governor's plan for right help right now is a large part of uh, where we need to be. Sarah Hammond, 13 News Now. This election will set the stage for future policies in Virginia. Which issues are driving voters to the polls? And your address will determine whether you see additional races on your ballot tomorrow, how you can learn more about the races where you live. Plus, control of the House of Delegates is at stake. We're breaking down the key races to watch. Nurse, I took an oath to do no harm. The decisions we make can mean life or death. I know what Karen Greenhall's extreme agenda can do to patients like mine. An agenda that bans life-saving abortions, criminalizes doctors, and uses unethical practices. Forcing women to carry unwanted pregnancies, it does nothing but harm. Say no to extreme Karen Greenhall. I'm Michael Fagans, candidate for delegate, and my campaign sponsored this ad. Who will put more money back in your pocket? Not Clint Jenkins. He voted for higher gas taxes and against ending the grocery tax. And Jenkins supports radical regulations that will jack up your energy bills by up to $800 a year. Emily Brewer voted to cut the gas tax and cut the grocery tax. Emily even voted to cut the tax on veterans' pensions. I'm Emily Brewer, candidate for Senate, and my campaign sponsored this ad. There's a crisis in education looming. MAGA extremists are coming for our classrooms, and Baxter Ennis is one of them. Ennis wants to defund our public schools. Ennis would make the critical teacher shortage worse and stop schools from fixing classrooms, even classrooms that contain dangerous mold, putting our children and their futures at risk. Baxter Ennis, unsafe for our children, unsafe for Hampton Roads. I'm Karen Jenkins, candidate for delegate, and my campaign sponsored this ad. Monty Mason's been lying about Danny Diggs the whole campaign. Truth Tracker finds that claim false. Mason is desperate to hide his racist past. In college, Monty Mason and his frat buddies mocked the brutality of slavery and sponsored a slave auction. This wasn't a youthful indiscretion. In Richmond, Mason voted against tougher penalties on cross burning. Monty Mason isn't fit to hold public office. I'm Danny Diggs, candidate for Senate, and I sponsored this ad. January 20th, 2020, they marched on Richmond, building a guillotine, proud boys, militias, white supremacists. And who else? Danny Diggs, a featured speaker on stage, wearing his sheriff's uniform. It's no wonder Diggs has a long history of keeping company with extremists, repeatedly paid by a group with neo-Nazi ties. Let's keep Danny Diggs and his kind out of the state Senate. I'm Monty Mason, candidate for state Senate, and my campaign sponsored this ad. Get everything you need to know to start your day on 13 News Now Daybreak starting at 4.30.
The countdown to election day is in its final hours. 13 News Now is keeping you up to date with everything you need to know before you vote. All eyes are on Virginia with control of the state legislature hanging in the balance. Thanks for sticking with us this afternoon for a special election preview newscast. Let's start things out with meteorologist Francis Payton for a look at our election day forecast. Francis. You know it's going to be a beautiful day out there. Beautiful day to head to the polls. We're looking at a high pressure system that's going to stay in control. It's right now in control today and we're looking at similar story for tomorrow but getting to the surface level here what we're talking about is a warm front that's going to lift over the area tonight into tomorrow. So what we're talking about for tomorrow will be some breezy conditions, but it's going to be much warmer by about 10 degrees. We're going to start off your morning time frame. Temperatures are going to cool down tonight into the upper 40s to lower 50s. Now, as you can see, temperatures warming up. Are we nearing that 70 degree mark by lunchtime tomorrow? And temperatures continue to warm up into the middle to even the upper 70s. In addition to that, cloud cover is going to decrease. So we're looking at mostly sunny skies by the later afternoon time frame and remaining very comfortable. Now with tomorrow, it is going to be unseasonally warm by about 10 degrees. We're actually going to get very close to a record breaking high for tomorrow afternoon. You're looking, I need to change this from Thursday to Tuesday, but uh, we're looking at the record was uh, 79 degrees back in 2022. Our forecast high is right now 77 degrees. We're going to keep a close eye on that forecast, but after your election day, we're in for a roller coaster of those temperatures before we cool down for this upcoming weekend. A decent forecast to head to the polls. So the question, what issues are driving you to the polls this year? Christopher Newport University's Wasson Center released its latest data about the top concerns for Virginia voters. Now, one poll found that 27% of voters say the economy and inflation are top of mind. And another controversial topic over the last year is this. 67% of voters support requiring parental notification if a student wants to go by pronouns that differ from their birth certificate. And finally, at least 72% of Virginians are opposed to tightening abortion restrictions. Now, the abortion debate has dominated elections this year. And Eugene, you've seen ad, we've all seen these ads and heard from Republican House and Senate candidates. Yeah, they've already spoken on where they stand on abortion. Vote for 15 weeks because that's what I promised people. Common sense. Uh, 15 week limitation with restrictions after 15 weeks. So 15 a week is a good compromise. That campaign that campaign stance was born out of Governor Glenn Youngkin's push for Virginia to ban abortions after 15 weeks with exceptions in the case of rape, incest or if the mother's life is in jeopardy. I think we can come together around a 15 week bill and that's what I have been very clear about. According to the CDC in 2020, just over 93% of abortions were performed at 13 weeks or under in the U.S. A little more than 6% happened at 14 weeks or more. Mike Gooding and Dr. Leslie Coggle joins us to talk about the potential abortion ban and other key issues for voters. Mike. Well, that is uh, right, Eugene. Uh, elections do have consequences. And Leslie Coggle from Virginia Wesleyan University with us here now on the abortion issue much at stake tomorrow. Absolutely. Virginia is the only state in the South that hasn't passed more restrictive abortion laws after the Supreme Court uh, kind of struck down Roe v. Wade. So there's really a lot on the line for abortion activists here. And a year and a half ago, we wouldn't have even been having this conversation except for the Supreme Court Dobbs decision. Absolutely. And that opened the door for states throughout the South to roll back uh, their abortion laws. And Virginia's the last one south of the Mason-Dixon line. Yeah, yeah, and this has brought a ton of money into Virginia legislative races from outside. And I think you can see the candidates are really speaking to the issue of abortion on both sides. I believe 40% of the ads that Democrats have aired in this campaign have had abortion as the main issue. And Republicans have been talking about it as well. And Leslie, so if tomorrow were, were over and the votes were counted and we were status quo, in other words, Youngkin's still governor, and you've got a Democrat-controlled Senate and a Republican-controlled House. Would you anticipate that there would just simply be no change as far as abortion? I would anticipate absolutely no changes. You might see some bills pass the House that go nowhere in the Senate, but I think abortion policy stands as is. But if there's some flip, Katie, bar the door. 
Absolutely, and Governor Youngkin has been clear that he would like to see a 15-week abortion ban. Um, most Republicans are on board with the 15-week abortion ban, and I think a lot of people, and you can see some of this in the Democratic campaign ads, fear that if Republicans controlled both houses and the governor, you know, the governor's mansion, what you might see is something more restrictive than 15 weeks. Now, abortion not, of course, the only uh, issue at stake in tomorrow's elections. Let's, let's talk about gun safety. Uh, we got a reminder in our country a week and a half ago up in Maine uh, what happened there. Again, based upon how things turn out tomorrow, how could things go as far as uh, gun laws in Virginia? Certainly Republicans have been really clear that they would like to see less restrictive gun laws um, and uh, uh, again are much more stringent in their interpretation of what the Second Amendment means. So if Republicans control both chambers, I think you can see some loosening of gun restrictions. But that flies a little bit in the face of what we just saw in the, in the Wasson poll, right? Most people seem to yeah, so guns are a great example of politicians not following the public. So by and large, the public is actually very supportive of certain gun restrictions like universal background checks. I've seen polls that show as much as 90% of the public in support of universal background checks when you buy a firearm. Nonetheless, they're certainly not um, something advanced by the Republican Party. They're, they're kind of not supported in that caucus. An interesting fact about guns to me is this is every any time that an event like Maine happens, and then when you talk to any politician and you say, well, what about gun laws? The first thing they say, I remember the governor, the mayor of Virginia Beach says to me after the shooting uh, at the municipal center in Virginia Beach, he says, well, it's too not soon. The time. It's not the time. And I just wonder, well, when is the time? Well, I think if you don't want gun restrictions, then it's never a good time to be talking about gun restrictions and it's never a good time for voters to be pushing for them. I think one of the other things that you see when these events happen is people try to shift the debate from gun restrictions to mental health and I think we've seen that a little bit and when people talk about um, kind of gun violence in the Commonwealth as well. Well one other thing that will be at stake of course is schools and, and policies having to do with transgender children. What's your anticipation of what tomorrow could mean? So this is a really interesting one because the public is a lot more evenly split on this issue than they are in abortion or uh, more restrictive gun laws. But I think if Republicans take both chambers, we could see legislation that restricts um, things like transgender students' access to bathrooms or um, kind of lays out requirements for how they would compete on sports teams. This has certainly been an issue that Republican candidates have used to kind of gin up excitement among their base and to get people to turn out on election day. Well, we'll start counting the votes at 7 p.m. tomorrow night, and we'll start to figure it out then. Stay with us. We'll be back with you one more time. But for now, back to uh, Eugene and Bethany. All right, Mike, thank you. Well, the balance of power in Richmond, not the only thing at stake tomorrow. What voters need to know about a proposed tax increase. Marius Clark, charged with a concealed weapon violation and possession of illegal drugs. It's no wonder Clark wants to defund our police. Clark voted against increasing penalties for gang crimes, against increasing penalties for drug dealers, against penalties for violent protesters. Clark even wants to end qualified immunity for law enforcement. It's simple. A criminal like Clark can never be trusted to keep us safe. I'm Mike Dillinger, candidate for state delegate, and I sponsored this ad. I'm Danny Diggs. For four decades, I served in law enforcement. From a dispatcher, to an investigator, to sheriff. My commitment has always been the same. Keep our neighborhoods safe and help families lead better lives. Now I'm taking that mission to the state Senate. I'll fully fund our police, put criminals behind bars, and I'll fight for better schools and always put parents first. I'm Danny Diggs, and I'm ready to take some common sense to Richmond. January 20th, 2020, they marched on Richmond, building a guillotine. Proud Boys, militias, white supremacists. And who else? Danny Diggs, a featured speaker on stage wearing his sheriff's uniform. It's no wonder Diggs has a long history of keeping company with extremists, repeatedly paid by a group with neo-Nazi ties. Let's keep Danny Diggs and his kind out of the state Senate. I'm Monty Mason, candidate for state Senate, and my campaign sponsored this ad.
This is Buford. His mom is Karen Greenhall, and she's our hardworking delegate. Karen is as caring and considerate as Buford is cute. Karen's a grandma who loves Virginia, and she fights hard for working families, safer neighborhoods, lower taxes, better paying jobs. That's why Karen Greenhall serves. So when you see all those nasty negative ads, remember, Buford wants you to vote for his mom. Karen Greenhall, she's one of the good ones. Monday Night Football goes coast to coast. Justin Herbert and the Chargers are powering up. Can Garrett Wilson and the Jets land another win? Yeah! Chargers Jets, tonight at 8 on ABC. Welcome back. Well, you could see additional races on your ballot tomorrow, depending on where you live. For instance, Gloucester County residents will now vote on a bond referendum for a proposed tax increase. Voters will decide whether to allow the county to increase the real estate tax by two cents to fund a series of capital improvement projects. Casey Baylor breaks down what county leaders say needs major improvements. Most of the items that are on the bond referendum have been on a waiting list for years. Gloucester County officials are looking to jumpstart several renovation projects. County Administrator Carol Steele says they are looking at a long-term form of borrowing to get the funds soon, though they want to hear from residents first. It allows the citizens to decide, do they want to enter into that debt? And we have a 30 year debt on sort of brick and mortar items and 20 year debt on other items. They're proposing a two cent increase on the county's real estate tax rate. Taxes are really not a good thing, but it is what it is. It needs to be done. You need a different economy. Bad time to uh, entertain tax stall. The money will help construct a new $12 million Gloucester Volunteer Fire and Rescue Station and renovate the Abingdon Volunteer Fire and Rescue Station. Funds would also fix the Gloucester High School Sports Complex and Botetourt Elementary School, and it will improve some public parks like Gloucester Point Beach. Steele says officials believe the two cent increase is the easiest way to pay off these loans. She also says the county is considering ways to pay it off sooner. Well, sales tax or growth in other ways or grants Steele says if voters approve of that bond referendum, then county officials can start borrowing money and begin some of those capital projects as early as spring of 2024. In Gloucester County, I'm Casey Baylor for 13 News Now. There are dozens of local races in our region, including school board and sheriff races. We broke down what you can expect to see on the ballot. Just go to 13newsnow.com and find this article under the featured section on the homepage. 100 seats in the House of Delegates are up for grabs tomorrow. Several key races are right here in Hampton Roads. Next, the top priorities for the candidates battling to represent Virginia Beach voters. This week is near and dear to Pat. Celebrating veterans all week. Speaking of that, you are one. It's all about the veterans. All right, money. Come on. Pick up that rail tour. Wow. Weeknights at 7. A community continuing to fight. It's on playgrounds, it's in gardens, it's everywhere. 13 News Now is digging deeper into coal concerns that could be affecting air quality in Norfolk. Hear how Norfolk Southern responds to the claims tonight at 6. Why would Emily Brewer vote to kill Obamacare? Well, there's 50,000 reasons. Lobbyists love Brewer because she'll sell us out for campaign cash, like blocking half a million Virginians from getting health care coverage and ending protections for pre-existing conditions like heart disease, cancer, and asthma. That's Brewer's game. Donors get rich, we go broke, and she breaks it in. Fenton Jenkins, candidate for Senate, and I sponsor this ad. Men playing women's sports. Boys in the girls' locker room. Parents ignored. Michael Fagans and Richmond Liberals support this extreme agenda. Fagans won't protect female athletes, and he won't protect parental rights. A mother and grandmother, Karen Greenhall sponsored legislation to protect fairness in girls' sports. Karen will always stand up for parental rights and give moms and dads a real voice in education. I'm Karen Greenhall, candidate for delegate, and my campaign sponsored this ad.
Banning abortion won't lower anyone's costs, and rolling back gun laws won't raise wages. But Virginia Republicans are pushing a culture war agenda. More division, less freedom. No plans to fix our biggest problems. Virginia Democrats have common sense plans to lower drug costs, increase wages, and keep guns out of our schools. So when you vote, remember, one party is fighting a culture war. The other is fighting for you. Vote for Democrats. FF PAC paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Right now, Republicans hold a slim majority in the House of Delegates. One key race is the battle for District 97. Incumbent Karen Greenhall and Michael Feggins are vying to represent parts of Virginia Beach. And Sparaco spoke with both candidates to learn their main goals and what they want you to know as a voter. Republican incumbent delegate Karen Greenhall is a familiar face surfing parts of Virginia Beach, seeking re-election to help Republicans keep control of the House in what is now District 97. Over the years, I've learned how to get things done, and that's what I've done in my first few years. I've gotten a lot accomplished, and I just want to go back and finish what we got started. Her opponent and Democratic candidate Michael Fagans threw his hat in the ring for District 97 after serving in the Air Force as an enlisted health care service manager and working with Senator Mark Warner. I'm taking all those experiences of, of, of federal uh, experience and working at the state and, uh, and, and putting that forward towards a uh, better vision here in Virginia Beach. The district covers parts of Virginia Beach, a predominantly white region with a majority of voters choosing Democrats for recent state and federal elections, aside from Governor Glenn Youngkin's race. With all seats up in the General Assembly, top key issues are at stake, including abortion rights and the governor's proposed 15-week ban. I support um, the governor's bill that he proposed um, with restrictions after 15 weeks but exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. I just put it simply that uh, that reproductive freedom uh, uh, needs, needs to stay here in Virginia, uh, and that Governor Youngkin's ban is going to hurt patients here in Virginia if, if, if allowed, and we're not gonna allow that here in Virginia. Depending on who takes control of the state, tax alleviation would play a big factor in Virginia's future after lawmakers recently dismissed Governor Youngkin's quest for $1 billion in recurring tax cuts. Uh, Governor Youngkin's uh, tax cuts have been mainly uh, put towards the most uh, uh, well-off, and especially some of the, uh, uh, the big businesses here, some of the most well-off individuals here, uh, and, instead of trying to take care of, of Main Street and, and those individuals here in House District 97. Right now, people are struggling. So anything that I can do, um, the, the rebates are great. I have people in my district asking when they get their $200 check. $200 means a lot. Um, but if we can take less out of their pocket instead of having to wait to give it back. In the newly drawn 89th House of Delegates districts, two contenders, Democrat Karen Jenkins and Republican Baxter Ennis, are on the ballot vying to represent parts of Chesapeake and Suffolk. Angelique Arentock explains their top priorities. Suffolk native Karen Jenkins, a current Suffolk School Board member on her second term, is vying for the 89th House District seat. Jenkins says she has a proven track record and comes from a service-oriented upbringing. I'm passionate about seeing the good and helping people bring out the good in them and um, advocating for the people that can't advocate for themselves. Among her top priorities, if elected, improving mental health care and services. I see firsthand the needs and education. Every single child deserves a world-class education. All the history, whatever it needs to be taught, we learn from our past. She also wants to focus on crime reduction. There's too many children uh, nephews, um, sons, even um, daughters and nieces that's in the ground because of senseless gun violence. Baxter Ennis, a retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, says he wants to continue a life of service by representing House District 89. Military has been a big part of my life, 21 years, but I've been here in Chesapeake for a long time and now I want a chance to serve this amazing Commonwealth. Ennis, a supporter of Governor Glenn Youngkin, says his top priorities, if elected, include tax reduction and relief, along with improvements to the education system. Our school should be the best, and this district should be the best in the Commonwealth. And the Commonwealth should strive, strive to be the best in the nation. He also wants to focus on helping fellow veterans. Veterans issues are very real to me and many people I know. 
I believe we owe it as a society to look after, make sure that those veterans uh, get the medical care, both mental and for physical Ill illnesses that they have have now, some of them incurred as a direct result of their military service. Angela Garen Talk, 13 News Now. To this now, Democrat Nadarius Clark and Republican Mike Dillinger are facing off for the 84th district in the House of Delegates. Now, both candidates say crime is one of their top priorities. Dillinger says he's going to make sure police officers are well funded and trained. And Clark agrees, saying he supports better training and more funding. But the candidates are split when it comes to abortion. I will take a very hard look at the legislation, uh, but until it's written and codified, it's something that I will study and listen to subject matter experts. I will be strongly against any ban that put a politician in the doctor's office with a woman uh, in their doctor when they ain't making those difficult decisions. Another priority for both candidates is rising inflation and the economy. The political world says Virginia is a state to watch tomorrow. How this election could shape the 2024 elections. Is skyrocketing in Norfolk. Phil Hernandez will make it even worse. Hernandez supports defunding the police and releasing murders and rapists from prison early. I'm Andy Pittman, candidate for delegate, and my campaign sponsored this ad. My niece Serenity is embraced by faith, family, and love but I still worry about her future. I'm Nadarius Clark. As teacher shortages devastate our schools, I wrote the bill to bring teacher pay up to the national average. As delegate, I stood up for our students' future because we have to attract and retain the best and brightest teachers. And no one should have to be rich to get the education they deserve. Born right here, Karen Jenkins is helping Hampton Roads thrive. On the school board, she expanded science and math programming to help keep the best and brightest here at home. As delegate, Karen Jenkins will fight to fully fund our public schools, keep guns out of our schools, and expand mental health services in our schools. Because Karen Jenkins knows that success is working together to make sure our children thrive. Karen Jenkins for delegate. I'm like all moms in Virginia. I want safe neighborhoods where our kids can grow up and great schools where our children can learn. My husband, Mike, will stop any effort to defund the police. He'll give law enforcement the support they need to keep our families safe. And he'll empower parents and fight for school choice and more educational opportunities for students. Mike has tremendous character and an incredible work ethic. You can always trust him to get the important things done. A contentious development project moves forward in Virginia Beach. And I love where I live, and I want others to have that same opportunity. VDOT crews are expected to start construction on I-64 in Norfolk. If that makes it any, any more quicker just by 20 minutes, I'm all for it. This is a history that not only can't be forgotten, but needs to be celebrated. We want to make sure Native Americans share their the history of their nations. Come together, be there for one another, and say, hey, what am I going to do today to enlighten the world? Andy Pittman backs the blue, and he's tough on crime. Pittman will put violent felons behind bars, and he will crack down on fentanyl dealers. Andy Pittman will make our neighborhoods safe again. Andy Pittman for Delegate. Less than 24 hours until Election Day, we want to bring everyone back together again to discuss the importance and implications of Virginia's election. With that said, Mike Gooding and Dr. Leslie Coggle join us one last time this afternoon. Mike. Well, and Eugene and Bethany, one thing's for sure, regardless of whether Republicans or Democrats get control of the General Assembly tomorrow, it's going to be a new day in Richmond regardless. Is that right, Leslie? Absolutely. With the new maps that are being drawn, so many retirements occurred, and you're going to see about a third of the people in Richmond will be new faces, regardless of which party wins. And we had no more of a greater example than that than right here in uh, uh, 
Portsmouth and Chesapeake when Lionel Spruill was drawn in with Louise Lucas. Yeah. Louise won that primary in the summer, and now Lionel, with his two decades plus service in the General Assembly, is kicked to the curb. Absolutely, and it's sad to see that experience go and the knowledge that comes along with all of that time in Richmond. And I think for a lot of people, there's a fear when you have that many new faces and that many people who are kind of inexperienced in the process of legislating. It leaves a door open for lobbyists to come in and have increased influence in the writing of legislation. But as an upside, right, some new faces, some new ideas that. that that could be a good thing. Absolutely, and perhaps even some emphasis on new issues that haven't really gotten a hearing with the current composition of the House of Delegates or the Senate. All right, well, the question our anchors posed is, does anything that happens tomorrow have any impact on the 24 election? I'm thinking for, for, for Biden and Trump in Virginia, maybe not, but maybe a, quite a bit for Governor Youngkin. He might, he might be banking on a big Republican night tomorrow night. Yeah, so I think for Governor Youngkin, a lot of people are watching him and thinking that he might have a formula for how Republicans can win in certain states um, and kind of, kind of a kind of moderate path. And if he doesn't, or if kind of the Republicans don't win, I think that's kind of a slap for Governor Youngkin and what he represents. And he's been doing a ton of fundraising, right, and getting a lot of support from donors and even some talk, again, of a presidential run in this race. Right? Well, speaking this. of presidents, right, do you suppose that, that Joe Biden and Donald Trump or paying any attention at all to Virginia tomorrow? You know, I would guess that Democrats are paying attention to Virginia for no other reason than the president's popularity right now is sitting at about 40 percent. I think it's 41. He's fairly unpopular. And one of the ways they might shore up support for a Democratic ticket is putting something like abortion nationally on the ballot in the same way George W. Bush put uh, gay marriage on the ballot in 2004. Okay, and it all comes down to turnout, right? Yeah. Normally for this sort of off off year election, 30% maybe? Is that the best we could hope for tomorrow? So I actually think you might see higher turnout than that. And just post-2016, we've seen consistently high turnout. You're certainly not going to see anything like you would see in a midterm election or a presidential election. But I think turnout in the last um, kind of state legislative race when governor wasn't on the ballot was over 35 percent, which is actually really quite high in these races. Okay, it's a cliche, but time will tell. Yeah. Leslie Cogill from Virginia Wesleyan University, thank you so much for being with us today, and we will see you tomorrow to to help make us look a lot smarter on TV tomorrow night. Thank you for having me. Okay, back to Eugene and Bethany. All right, Mike and Dr. Coggle, thank you. We've covered a lot in the last hour, and our work is really just beginning. I think things will truly heat up after the polls close tomorrow, and you can count on 13 News Now for complete election coverage tomorrow night. You'll join Janet Roach, Mike Gooding, and a political expert for the results as they do come in with analysis of what those results really mean for the political landscape in Virginia and the United States as a whole. We'll have a special digital newscast tomorrow night at 9 o'clock on 13 News Now+. Plus. You can add the app to your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV today.